Okay, so we have all the dirty deets. Uh, not to be confused with ACDC's Dirty Deeds done. Okay, I just aged myself. Whatever. We have the new Intel Core Ultra Processor 200 stuff to talk about. I buy power PCs deliver top performance to anyone looking for an all new system to enhance their gaming experience. All I buy power computers are built with quality components featuring the latest CPUs and GPUs from the top manufacturers in the market. Their PCs are also backed by an industry leading warranty offering three years of labor and two years of parts for comprehensive post purchase support. So you can rest assured that your I buy power system is always ready to game when you are. To see the latest deals to apply towards the purchase of your new system, visit the I buy power gaming deals at the link in the description below. All right, so I'm aware that this is just gonna be some slides that we're talking about here because we don't have the stuff yet. The embargo for performance doesn't even lift until the 24th. Uh, but anyway, we have some of the architecture design stuff that we can talk about here, what's different, pricing and all of that. Um, I'll try and make this not a long video. They, in the keynote, they not keynote, but the press meeting, they spend a lot of time talking about AI. Now AI, I think is, AI is the new VR ready slash RGB discussion, so many people are sick of hearing about e AI. It doesn't matter to most people. However, when it comes to the way that it's intended to be leveraged on these consumer grade processors, is to really start to provide NPU or neural processing units that are available for game developers to use to allow it to do something alongside the CPU, giving an uplift in performance. So I just wanna kinda of put that out there before we get to that part because of the fact that I think for most people, they're just like, whatever man, show me the fucking numbers and move on, right? And I'm, I'm that way too, for the most part. But as you can imagine, just like AMD, Intel is leaning heavily on its performance to uh, performance per watt gains. So they're advertising up to 50% power reduction for the same level of performance plus some. So it, it sounds very similar, right, to the AMD discussion where AMD launched the 9000 series, right, the 9600X, 9700X, and we're like, hey, it's half the power and it's like single digit more performance. And people were like, big effing deal. I don't care about the efficiency, I care about the performance. Causing AMD to have to basically backtrack and create a 105 power mode for those that are like, just give me all the, the power at the, all the performance at the power hit. And it only led to like another 10% more performance for like 40% more power. So there's an exponential curve obviously that takes place when it comes to power. Now Intel knows this. So the base wattage for the new, um, like the 285, Processor, we'll talk about the names. The names are so dumb, but I think you guys already know this. So the new naming schemes, if you will, for the processors are the Ultra 9 285K, the Ultra 7 265K, the Ultra 7 265KF, 245K and 245KF. So the 285K, the, I, the Ultra 9 only has one SKU. And that, it, that's a full blown SKU that has a iGPU, NPU, all that in it. You'll notice though, that as you go down um, the stack, and you look at the core counts here, hyper-threading is gone. That is, some, that is one of the rumors that turned out to be true as we move into this launch, that Intel was heavily looking at the idea of doing one core per thread. And that's exactly what they did here. So the i9, excuse me, the U9 or Ultra 9, 24 core, 24 thread, four GPU cores, 13 tops NPU at 5.7 gigahertz. Now what I think is kind of cool is as you go down the stack, they don't cut down the NPU at all. It's 13 tops all the way down the stack, which is nice. So that additional leverage that game developers can start using for the NPU to handle tasks within their game engine is the same all the way down. So there's that benefit to everyone. So the 285K is 8P core, 16E core. That's the same as what you're used to seeing with the 13.9 and 14.9. It's just, there's no hyper threading. And I think that's where they're getting a lot of their efficiency gains from, to be honest, because if you, if you have a, a, an Intel CPU right now that has hyper threading, which is almost all of them, if you go, right now into say download hardware info, download Cinebench, let it run and do a power draw test. If you were to then go into your BIOS, disable hyperthreading and run that same test, you would see a significant drop in actual power draw. Now, typically you do that, you see a big reduction, about 30% reduction in your overall performance of your CPU by disabling hyperthreading. Same for AMD and SMT or simultaneous multi-threading, which is the same thing. However, what they're talking about here now is the fact that they have a geo mean uplift of like 8% faster for single thread performance versus the, the previous gen. So that makes sense because single thread, single core, it's just one thread. Now what happens when you enable all core? That's where I would start to say, okay, are we gonna see at 24 threads versus the previous gen 32 threads? Is this one of those situations where to move forward 
in the architecture of Intel, which now is a sort of, it's a tile design. We're not calling it chiplet because AMD technically is chiplets. That's what they call them. And you have each CCD physically separated from each other and then the IO die physically separated and there's gaps between them. They call them tiles where they're all just butted up against each other in, in a quote unquote 3D format on the exact same substrate. So that helps with latency and efficiency in terms of the communication between them. But because they've moved on to this more tile design now, uh, what does this mean now for performance? Are we gonna see increased latency? Are we gonna see reduction in overall multi-threaded performance because hyper-threading is gone? No, in multi-threaded performance, they're advertising a 15% faster performance, geo mean, which is averaged, by the way, amongst all their tests, by the way. You gotta understand what geo mean means. Geo mean says if you took all the ups and downs, plus and minuses, and found the average, it's on average, 15% faster than the previous gen, which they were comparing it to 14900K without hyper-threading. So that's, that shows us we're seeing some actual fairly big core improvements in terms of the way that the core is handling that workload. Now they're also advertising 13% faster versus the 9950X, which is the 32 thread part. Now that 9950X in multi-threaded workloads has been basically hammering the 14900K uh, in, in multi-threaded workloads. So for them to even show an improvement over that shows that we are now getting exactly what we hoped for, which is leapfrogging in competition. Now, when it comes to gaming, this is one of those things where whether or not you're gonna see an uplift in performance or a decline in performance is gonna have everything to do with how well that title and the more tiled design of the CPU interact with the needs of that CPU's latency performance. Now, when it comes to gaming performance on the new core, and we're they basically showed us the 285K as the, uh, the, the real discussion here because that's their top tier part. So they've compared it with AMD's 9950X, which I guess in a price comparison makes sense because the CPU is nearly $600. I think a 7800X3D would probably still beat the CPUs, the, the Ultra 9 CPU in a straight up gaming head to head, just because of the benefits of the, the X3D cache. But price wise, it's not a fair comparison. So obviously when we do our third party reviews, we're gonna compare it to a whole gamut of CPUs so that you'll be able to see uh, or gamut of CPUs, whatever the right word is. Some games today are very sensitive to latency and cache latency. So when it comes to some titles are gonna perform slower, some titles are gonna perform better. Most titles are not gonna perform any different than your current 13th or 14th gen CPU, depending on which title it is and, and which power profile you're using. So we were talking about this a little bit off camera. This is, this is Intel's Zen. This is Intel's first gen Zen. If you go back to 2016, when AMD made its change to the chiplet design from a standard CPU layout, we saw some growing pains. We saw some titles, although Zen architecture was way faster than anything FX had available at that point. Compared to Intel, we saw many titles not be able to truly leverage the Zen architecture yet because there were too many things that weren't really accounted for and properly designed for. And that being the substrate and the chiplet design and the latency that takes place between the CCDs when the tasks are handed off to other CCDs. <clears throat> That's why the 9950X and 9900X do core parking today. It's designed to just sort of take that latency out entirely. So Intel's at least on their charts been forthcoming with, hey, some are a little faster, some are a little slower in terms of overall performance. Overall, it's the same. And then they lean heavily on, but the power reduction, which is a good thing, but I think most of us have already expressed with AMD, we don't care about power reduction, we care about performance. Most of us do. There's those out there right now that are furiously mashing their keyboard that I am, I am disconnected and don't know people's situations and that's true, but just read the comments on the efficiency videos and uh, you'll see this is not my opinion, this is our opinion. Moving on, that's a good discussion. But what I was, if I digress back to about three minutes ago, we're gonna probably see over the next few generations that latency between the tiles getting faster. Now the tiles are basically touching. Like if you just look at a, at a, at a X-ray of it, it looks like one single die, but it's not. Zen is in its fifth iteration of that. This is Intel's first iteration of this. It's just ironic. If you kind of look at Intel's discussions with public public facing channels in the past about the CPU glue, the <laughs> CPU glue, or we think gamers are gonna adopt a wait and see mentality. I think they waited and they saw. And I think they're 
doing very well for themselves now, AMD. Anyway, moving on, we'll talk about power. So the base, the base power for the CPU is 125 watts. So is the current CPUs. We know how that went. So right now, Intel's biggest challenge is truly going to be, is this fleshed in a way that two years from now, we're not gonna find out they're all just jumping off bridges together because <laughs> that's what it really looks like they're doing. Intel has been very adamant that that problem that existed for 13th and 14th gen does not exist in Arrow Lake. That's fine. We're discussing trust at this point. And when trust is broken, it is hard to re-earn it. So we will have to now wait and see, Intel, how well this works out for you in the future. Now the power profile, the maximum power profile that motherboard manufacturers will be able to create toggles and switches for is 250 watts on these CPUs. It's crazy to me still that there's no hyper-threading but they have a max power wattage of 250. That's still a lot. I mean, let's not forget, AMD is at 170 on its 9950X. So it's still a lot of power. So we're just gonna have to see uh, in real world testing what that means for actual cooler temps. I guess one other thing to mention here is XE graphics have now made their way to the CPUs, which it's taken a long time. Now, the nice thing about these XE cores existing in the CPUs that have GPUs is the fact that uh, the latest codecs are supported on the XE. So this gives you content or access to like AK streams, better codecs for your streams when it comes to OBS and such. And QuickSync, a lot of people didn't use because they only it only supported the older codecs, but now you have access to the newest ones separate from your GPU. All right, let's talk about price because that's the last thing that I think is worth mentioning here before we actually get our hands on it and can talk about real world performance. Core 9 is 589 bucks. Let me do a quick price search to see on Amazon what the current price of a 14900K is because that's obviously what it's intended to replace. 14900Ks are currently $445 on Amazon US. 13900K is 416. So you've got about a $144 premium to take on the newest, and, and that's the thing. This is why I say that this is not gonna be the best move for people that are already on current generation, especially high-end generation, if you, if you know for a fact that yours is not on its way out. Um, yeah, it's 589 versus 445, right? So we're talking $144 of premium cost, plus a whole new platform, because you're gonna need a new motherboard for it as well, because it's a whole different socket. So. That is some bleeding edge early adopter price tax, price premium for those like me that are idiots and just go, I want the latest and greatest at all costs. But anyway, moving on, the Core uh, Ultra 7 265K is 394. Um, oh, interestingly enough, it's only $15 cheaper. Oh, I thought it were $20 cheaper. Okay, only $15 cheaper by going with the F SKU. They used to be 20 bucks. So it's 379 for the 265KF. 309 for 245K, 394 for the uh, 245KF. Just get the just get the K SKU. But anyway, um, it's not a huge jump, barely a jump actually for current gamers. And I'm and I'm talking to gamers here. It's just the newest thing. But we can't get anywhere in the future if we don't start somewhere. So if we don't start here, then we'll never get to there. And this only is gonna be interesting to people that I think are upgrading from a really old system or even a few generations old at this point. Or maybe you're jumping from an older AMD rig to Intel, I don't know. I don't know why people make the decisions they do to switch platforms. Uh, but the point is, if you're on like a 13900K, 13700K, 14.9, 14.7, whatever, this is, not, this is not interesting to you. It's just not. The power, the power savings is cool and all, but I, I think we've already learned through AMD's 9000 series launch that gamers demand performance at that efficiency cost. So it'll be interesting to see what the default power profiles are out of the box for the motherboard manufacturers and what kind of additional power we can throw at it if we want to, given everything that just took place with 13th and, 19th, 19th, 13th and 14th gen. Ironically though, uh, Intel is touting overclockability and they're even emphasizing that you should probably overclock the e cores to get the best performance. And actually, we saw that with 13th and 14th, and even 12th gen. Pushing e cores as far as possible usually yielded me better scores on like Cinebench and stuff like that than pushing p cores as far as possible. I would usually push p cores a little bit and then e cores as far as I could till unstable, and I saw bigger gains that way. And so it seems like that's exactly what they're expecting to happen here. 
Okay, there you go. <clears throat> There's your 700th video that you probably saw in your inbox today regarding Intel Core Series. Performance embargoes lift October 24th. So that's the day that I think you really should care about. All right, thanks for watching guys. Sound off down below. Man, I'm really curious how many of you are, are going to take a chance on this architecture. I think, the, I think the most of you right now, if I asked you to say whether or not you're gonna adopt or wait, I think it's gonna be overwhelmingly wait. And that's, that's okay. Especially with X3D on the horizon. Oh yeah, that's why, yeah, the, this is, when it comes to games, 9800X3D is what we're all waiting for. <laughs>